Welcome to Designing 21st Century Learning Spaces on University Campuses. I am Dr. Shonda Garner-Brooks. My co-presenter is Dr. Tara Como-Davis. We are faculty at the University of Louisiana at Lafayette. We teach in the College of Education. The goals of this presentation are to construct a podcast, host a Facebook Live session, be able to create and host conference calls, design multifunctional learning spaces, and utilize various technologies to incorporate in those spaces. And we're going to start today with constructing a podcast. What is a podcast and how does it work? A podcast is like an audio journal where you record your thoughts and you share them with others. You can have more than one participant. They can be streamed live like a radio show. You need a hosting service for your podcast once you have content. What equipment do I need to start a podcast? Well, you're going to need a microphone, a uh, I would prefer an I prefer an external microphone, prefer to my internal built into my device. I find that it gives me a cleaner sound. Headphones are not a necessity. They are highly recommended. Basically, they are a necessity. And unless you're going to use something other than a USB microphone, then you would need an audio interface to be able to connect that microphone to your device. Choose a, choose a topic for your podcast. Research says that most people who are motivated enough to seek out podcasts want expert advice. So if you plan on using your podcast with an audience bigger than your students, what kind of expert advice are you going to offer on your channel that's going to differentiate you from other channels. You need to thoroughly plan out your recordings. Next, you want to choose a name that is going to be memorable. And again, you have to think about who is going to be your audience for the podcast. In my case, my podcast is devoted to my students and my clients that I see out in the community through my nonprofit work. They know me as Dr. Shonda. And so that's the name of my podcast. Theme music, you might want to have some uh, uh, music that's associated with you. You can Google copyright free music and find a piece of music that, you, that fits the theme of your podcast. And then your design, one of the biggest things with design is going to be your cover artwork and that being accepted into iTunes, it has to be a specific pixel, and I've put that in the uh, comments right here. So once you've got your equipment, you've got your name, you've picked your theme music, you've got your design, now you are ready to find your host. There are things to consider, the price, simplicity. Are you going to want to host this like on iTunes or a bigger plat library? Uh, are you going to have embedded players? Do you want to have a whole site or do you just want to have your podcast page? What do you want the virtual space that will house your podcast because it is like a website. So your, your, it will have a URL, it will have an RSS feed that folks can go to on their computers or on their iPads. But if you register with iTunes, then folks will already also be able to find it in the iTunes directories. And I'm saying iTunes because uh, obviously I'm an Apple user. There are different hosts, I've listed them here. I'm using Podbean simply because Podbeam was my price, free. And so I don't know if the other ones offered a free um, 
trial subscription. And so here, this is a podcast. They have their various plans, and I've gone with the free plan. And then these are some of the things that they offer with the free plan. One of the biggest things is, of course, size, five hours of podcast. And so what I would have to do if I exceeded five hours was I would have to be taking uh, files down. And so I'd have to, that would be 10, 30-minute shows. Um, or 20, 15 minute shows. So it really depends on what, what my needs are and who my audience is and the dedicate, the, the level that I want to dedicate to the podcast. So I'm going to be using this for a while, but I feel like it's something that for now I'm going to just be taking up and putting down. I am working on a grant to purchase, uh, so I can have more space for my nonprofit, and then in turn i'll be able to use that with my students and house our lectures since we're doing conference calls everything we're doing right now we're able to capture that so what a, a great time and such a horrible time to be able to go in and capture all that and so what i'm showing you here is just what podcasts look uh the pod bean looks like once you've logged in and you've got your subscription you can see uh, other podcasts which would can give you some ideas on how to set up your podcast page or do you want to go with the whole website built around your podcast uh, and that's what you get with the different levels of subscription so i'm just showing that there's a lot of content here for you to get ideas from or maybe to start maybe you just been thinking about podcasting but first you'd like to delve into podcasts you've heard people talking about talking about listening to podcasts and You've been interested in that. And so here goes uh, some podcasts. I like this where it says stuck at home there. Activities for uh, podcasts for kids. Activities you can do with your kids at home. I'm going to be stealing that idea. So, I've created my first So, once you've got podcast, your first podcast I've and you have sent out my link, uh, uploaded your first audio file and you have your first episode of your first com. season, this is the page that you'll be and brought to. And, of course, depending on your level of subscription, you'll have control, uh, more control picture, over the layout. And so, this is Google the standard layout that was picture. default. And That's my picture default. from Google. So, so I logged in with like my Google change account and took my default picture. To uh, and that's Remember, the standard picture. That's this is free. how I can go you have and back you go to layout and change. So, this themes. is the current one. If you want to what keep do that I image, of course, if you want to upload your own image, then you'll have to upgrade to the pro plan. But if let's say you wanted to keep that image, you can over change the, the color. They have the whole I do have palette. Control over you can change fonts your font color. the colors of borders. You can change your link color. And if I want more where control, folks click of course, and brings them to either the audio or something. If you uh, hover over something, you can change that color. 
change the title, size, font. Yeah, of course it always says. You have an audio player, what color? Um, this is a, the player. player, if your player is visible. There's some what other color will themes, the links be on your player? Though, so and then, these are of course, all they have the templates for the some more free uh, subscription. And there are more free templates. I thought that was interesting. They put it at the bottom. And so there are some different more. themes. That you like. And you can go through browse. Kind of relevant. Find one that you like. I'm just going to look at them all. I like this one. I'm going to activate it. And the only thing I have control over is the color of the pod. The player. And I can't change the image. Do I want my stats to show? I don't have control over that. All of those are in the upgrade plan. So now let's look at it. See, I want, I'm going to want to maybe change the font size on here. So at the beginning of each semester, when I'm going over my syllabus and my expectation for the class, I always have my students register for Remind. For those of you who are not familiar with Remind, it allows me to send text messages to my students but not give them my phone number. I can send out up to 100. I can send out a text message to groups of up to 150 folks for free, and I can create 10 active classrooms. So you would click sign up. I'm already in, so I'm just going to log into my account. And so as soon as we on March the 13th, our system went, uh, well, we went remote. And I've been able to stay in communication with my students. So you can have up to 10 free classrooms and you can have uh, up to 150 uh, participants in each one of those and then you can archive them so in order to create a class just hit create a class you can name it and then they give you a code or you can sometimes pick your own if uh, if nobody's using it so let's see I'll try sites 2020 See if anybody, somebody's. It only has. Let's see if it's available. Now you're ready to record the audio for your podcast, and so there are, are lots of software out there, but Audacity is a free software and it's the one that I use. So get a rough draft or an outline and plan out your oral arguments before you get uh, to recording. It will save you a lot of frustration if you kind of plan out what you want to say and it will help uh, with the swiftness of getting the audio down pack. I'm using Audacity to record the audio for my podcast there are a lot of features in audacity i am only proficient in the recording and exporting of an mp3 cutting and fixing 
uh, some mistakes, but you can reduce the noise. The you can reduce the where you hear little pops of uh, the tongue in or lips and language. Audacity really can give you any level of professionalism or finish that you want on your podcast. But in, for my case, I just need to record my audio. So you just hit the record button and then you see on the timeline it's laid out where I'm re talking. I can later on go back and re erase dead air. I can go back and cut out mistakes. I can go in and stop the talk insert a piece of audio and then go back in and finish the talk and I'll show you how to do that so I'm going to stop I'm going to just cut out the last uh, nine seconds just control X or this then I'm going to record it really does do a lot for the price which is free the biggest headache is the lame file that you must install in order to export as an mp3 but you only have to do it one time i'll stop it there i'll come here to the end of that audio and i'll control v paste and so i carried on my conversation so now i have i can zoom in and out to look at the whole piece or to drill down to one sentence or drill down to one word so to drill down to a word uh, let me give you an example if I scroll out like this okay this whole view is uh, not even a second I mean uh, 45 seconds is whole piece is 45 seconds but if I zoom in now I'm only looking at 14 of those seconds so see I could go in and get a breath I can go in and remove an um I can cut out words and paste them together and make an audio clip say what I wanted to say if I wanted to do that and that's just a fraction of what audacity can do when I have what I want and it's the length that I want I'm just gonna go and file I can save it as a project if I want to work on it later and then I want to export it as an mp3 and if you haven't installed the lame then the export will be grayed out and you have to install that in order to be able to produce an mp3 using audacity like I said that's one of the limitations and now you have an mp3 for your first podcast So in recording your podcast, I showed you Audacity. It, that would be if you had all of your speakers together in one room. But let's say you wanted to do multiple people who were remote, like right now. You can use conferencecall.com or a service like that, where you're able to have all of the people call in. You're able to record the audio. Then you can download that audio, put it into Audacity. And manipulate it the way that you need it's a great way to capture conversations and then have a file you can also do video uh, capturing too with the free conference call I use freeconferencecall.com once you've recorded your audio you're going to need to edit your podcast episodes and I do my editing in audacity podbean I see does offer editing but I'm comfortable with audacity and I showed audacity in the video uh, remember that when you're using audacity first save it as a project projects are easier to go in and manipulate and then export it as an mp3 once you're done with it don't forget you also must install a lame 3 or lame file in order to export mp3s uh, in audacity but you only have to do that one time This goes a little bit more to talk about 
that Audacity really has some advanced features like normalizing and noise reduction so that you can really get a smooth uh, studio quality production from a free software. And then this is the address to get that lame, that MP3 encoder that you will need to export files uh, from Audacity as an MP3. Other than that, you're only going to be able to export them as a WAV file. Now, after you've published your podcast, how do you disseminate it? So I use Remind to inform my students that a new podcast episode has been uploaded. You can paste the link into your student management system into Moodle or Blackboard. You can email a link to a student and you can also add iTunes to your directory and your subscribers will be notified when a new episode has been uploaded. At the beginning of each semester, in our first class when we're going over our syllabus, I have my students register for Remind. Remind allows me to communicate with my students in real time. So I'm able to send text message with attachments um, <clears throat> and links uh, to, to, to their phone without them having my contact information. And I can set office hours and a dialogue. So you would click sign up. I'm going to click log in. And so this was really helpful, especially now with having to switch remotely. <clears throat> the great thing about technology is we have it available. The bad thing is that sometimes things go wrong. Links are wrong. You you misplaced the mis you know mis copied a link or was broken or something. You can just shoot a text. You know your students can send you a message, let you know, hey, the link is broken, and you can fix it and send the message out. Hey, here's the link. Or if you're reading and you come across something interesting that you'd like to share with your students. You can, you know, it, it really is good for facilitating a dialogue and helping our students keep accountable. So with the free account, you can get up to 10 active classes with 150 participants per class. And to create a class, you would just hit create a class and you would name it. So I'm going to make a cl class for us. And then the code, there's a code, but you can differentiate. You can make your own sometime if it's available. Let's do 04, 07, 20. Uh, 0407 site 2020. And so this is where you would manage who was in the, you'd be able to see who was in the class. This is how you invite people. Uh, you can get a PDF. So why don't you go ahead now and register and we will send over a handout. So you're texting 81010 and you're sending the message at site 
0407. And it's going to ask you for your name. And there is an app for Android and Apple. You can send the link for folks to join. I just have students register in class. You could send a PDF out in an email or you could upload copy and paste from a Excel doc. So if I wanted to send a message to this group, what I could first I when I log in I'd locate the class here. And then I can send a message here. And you can also, when you're sending the message, you can schedule it to come out at a certain time. So if you, if especially now, during the pandemic, when day is night and night is day, for me at least, I can send the messages to come out, like, tomorrow at 8 or this class runs from 12 to 3 so I try to you know only you know send my interactions between 12 and 3 so I could set it to for tomorrow and let's say that this is at 330 and this would be the welcome and so at 330 tomorrow which would be today. I also should show you, let's see, let's send a message to this group. This is where you can attach a photo or a video. You can attach a file, you can Google Drive. You can attach survey, volunteer sign up, even flip grid. So you have some options to attach and you can send the messages out uh, in so many different languages. Tens, a ton of different languages. You can schedule it and send it. So another learning space that I use is Facebook. Facebook is a great interactive way to engage your students, uh, disseminate information, do presentations, uh, exchange ideas. Uh, what you need to do is create a group specifically for your students. That's what makes social media manageable is having groups that are dedicated to specific topics and then you don't have all of the chatter of everybody with different ideas being in one main uh, timeline or news feed and so I have groups of various interests and I've created a group for my students so you would click so first you need Facebook so you'll need to sign up for an account if you're worried about your students finding you on Facebook then don't put anything on Facebook and make an account with a very generic name. But you will need a Facebook account in order to make groups, in order to go live, and to participate in your students' lives. Lives, L-I-V-E. So I already have my group. It is EDCI for uh, EDCI 100, but it's for all of my EDCI students. This is the members of the group. And you do, I do have to allow you access to the group. And so you can see if, who's unavailable, uh, who's blocked. I can invite members to the group. I have to authorize who is who comes to the group. Not everyone is allowed in the group. And then 
these are the members of the group and what I've done for this group is because my students are doing presentations I wanted them to have an audience and so since we were now doing remote that's even a better it's even better that I have this all set up uh, because our students now have to they still have to do their coursework and in the College of Ed a lot of that is presentation teaching to the students and so now we're having to be more creative and so I'm housing my lectures here I'm putting them up on YouTube and then I'm putting a link to my YouTube here in the Facebook page because this is the learning space that we're familiar with and we know to come here and get our information also we're using remind so I'm able to send a link out to remind but in this case I just put it here uh, and the system notifies the students so instead of me having to send a text their apps notify them that there is if they turn on their notification that there's now new information here kind of like an RSS feed it lets you know and so this is uh, one of my students uh, teaching um, uh, a less a math lesson on leftovers build it and break it decomposing and composing numbers so these are students who are I have this semester and so I'm, I won't unmute them so FERPA but you're able to see these were these are Facebook talks based around different math topics I teach math methods class and so these are talks about um, probability games in uh, diverse cultures uh, questioning the order of operations uh. okay so I was trying to locate their topic they had a rubric and they're supposed to list their topic there but unfortunately not everybody does but they did paint bucket uh, polygons and so they were each assigned each group was assigned a chapter uh, and then the chapter they had to f read an article uh, from an erudite journal JSTOR and then they had to do a presentation they had props and it was just a great way for them to share information with all of us and it prepared us to now to be 100% remote and now we're able to use Facebook as a great medium to exchange information so I am hosting my lectures here in addition to doing zoom every other week and so my colleague uh, will talk about zoom at the end of the Facebook at the, at the end of this presentation she'll present zoom and so what we what we're showing you here is a various tools that you can incorporate into your Moodle, into your Blackboard, into your student management system that can make that environment more dynamic and less stagnant. And so you can put a link to your Facebook page. But the great thing about having your students join Facebook and putting information directly into Facebook, it sends them a notification that they're familiar with. So they already have their their notifications on for Facebook and Instagram and everything that I'm doing in Facebook, I could have been doing in Instagram, but I'm old and so I use Facebook um, and Instagram is like their kind of private world and I find that students are much more willing to let me into their Facebook world because a lot of them don't have Facebook because it is for their moms and so it's not intrusive as like trying to do this on Instagram now that you can go live and as far as Twitter I'm just more comfortable using Facebook and I don't even I don't know if you can go live on Twitter talking out of school so let's go live and so going live inside of a group limited to the folks who are in the group versus if I go live on my home page so if I just click live video you've got to make sure you need equipment for this too uh, you'll see when my video comes live you'll see that I am equipped with headset and I have an external camera uh, I do a lot of video conferencing so I want to be comfortable Oh, and it's because they are now upgraded. Um, I'm going to use my camera. 
I'm gonna done. Go live now. Says screen share. Oh, so now this is all brand new, <laughs> brand new. Of course, for the second that you want to record something live. So this is new. This, if you know, if you've gone live on Facebook before, you did not get this little control panel. This is great. This is letting me choose which camera I want. I want to use my external camera so that you can see me. There I go. Hello. And I want to use my uh, USB mic. So I'll set that to my USB mic and you'll see that I am um, using. Oh, did I lose my. Hmm. Okay. We'll just go with it doesn't want to use my microphone camera uh, microphone headphone microphones. So we'll just hit go live and it says share in a group and which group do I want to share in? Do I want to put it on my timeline? Uh, what page and I'm going to leave it here in this group and I'm going to hit go live. And I am now live. Thank you very much. And like this with this new dashboard, I can send out polls I can show video clips oh I love this you can ask poll questions during your live you can ask a question so you can have some questions already in there maybe create a question oh you can save and publish I can share a video clip inside of my live stream health. I can see uh, the logistics. Is my video too low? Is my signal weak? And I can keep adjusting my stream if I needed to switch cameras. Yes, so this is all brand new. It's showing me the time. And here is my, I can make me bigger if you if you like with your traditional I love that it has your analytics here your uploads and downloads speeches and now we're in a conference call with another professor right now Brooklyn this is not for you this is pro for professional development <laughs> so my students are seeing me live this is for professional development not for my students but thanks. So, I, I mean, you couldn't have asked for a better example than that. So I'm doing this video on how to go live. And because the students get notifications, they got a notification in real time. Hey, uh, Dr. Brooks is live, but they're also in another class right now. So I didn't dream that they would have um, uh, checked chimed over into this class so anyway that is going live on facebook when i'm done i can just hit lot in live video if you end this live now you'll have the options to save it so it maybe it was a a personal chat that y'all were having uh and you don't want to save it you don't want it to be viewed later maybe you were reviewing for a test um and if you didn't get the review then you've got to go study for yourself And so I don't want to delete it. I want to save it. And that is going live. And now, oh, I don't want to go to that. Now, once it uh, finishes buffering and uploading, there we go. And now you're able to, Facebook 
can be both synchronous, can be live, like you saw Brooklyn chiming in. And so uh, the students and I do synchronous, and it can also be asynchronous. They can watch it at a later time, which is their presentations. And so you notice that I'm using it as a, a, a faculty, and then I'm using it to present lectures. Uh, and then my students are using it to do presentations as well as to do ed talks. So Facebook, a very versatile platform. And then when you set control over the groups and stuff, you have control over who is able to get in and see uh, the presentation. And that way you can reduce just like tr traffic and hecklers or just comments, comments instead of questions, or even if they are comments that they're productive comments that help the presenter grow or endows more knowledge on the rest of us. Hello and welcome to this mini session on Zoom. Um, Zoom allows you to have meetings virtually online with videos and audio. Um, currently there's a free account um, that you can use and you can have as many as 300 people join your meetings or your classes or your sessions uh, via Zoom and I'm going to show you how to host your own Zoom meetings. Um, you will need a ca an account, but you just need a, uh, an email address and you can sign up for free. Um, these Zooms meeting, Zoom meetings um, last for 40 minutes. Um, once you log in, you're going to go into your account. And here's where I clicked on my account on the top right hand corner of the screen. Um, Zoom offers that 40 minute time limit right now for free. But if your class or your meeting is not yet finished, your everyone can rejoin your meeting after the 40 minutes are up. So when you get to your account, your profile, it'll look similar to, to this. This is my um, account here. And what I'm going to first show you how to do is just how to host a meeting. So you have a meeting that you need to meet with some um, some of your colleagues possibly or um, a few friends. Um, I'm going to go ahead and host this meeting with the video on. Of course, you can choose on, off, or screen share only, but I'm going to go ahead and do with video on and show you how simple this is to use. So I'm going to click there, and then I'll need to open up the link in Zoom. And we're going to pause and wait for the meeting to begin. When the meeting begins, um, your volume um, is usually on and your video is off and you have the option of turning those on and off and then you have the option of inviting people to join your meeting. So here we go. My meeting has opened and it has just begun and there's just me in this meeting. Um, you have the opportunity to start the meeting um, and you have the opportunity to mute yourself or and anyone in the meeting has the opportunity to do the same thing to start the video or to mute um, here is an invite where you can invite um, those that you want to join the meeting you can copy the URL for them or copy the entire invitation for them to join your meeting um, and you will you can email them the, either the invitation or the URL um, there's also a chat feature that allows you to chat with everyone. And um, this chat can go on between all the members of your meeting. Okay, I'm not going to go ahead and start my video, but I just want you to know there's also an option here that um, you can choose a virtual background. I'm unfortunately um, the computer that I'm using right now doesn't have the most updated uh, background screen so my virtual background isn't working until I have a green screen that I purchased but once I have my green screen then I'll be able to um, choose my virtual back backgrounds. Here that's me um, and here's a background that I'd like to use but of course that's not working uh, yet until I have a green screen so I'm not going to use that um, today. I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting because I'd like to show you how to schedule a meeting. Um, that's what I do with most of um, my meetings. I'll go ahead and schedule a meeting 
because for example say I have a meeting coming up this Thursday at 1230 then I want to go ahead and email everybody and let them know that they can join my meeting so I'm going to show you how to do that because that's the one that I use the most often so I'm going to click here where it says schedule a meeting and it's pretty um, user-friendly um, I'm going to call it site um, Zoom meeting. Um, you have the option to enter a description. When is this meeting going to occur? Well, let's say um, it's going to be April um, 7th, Tuesday, April 7th. And let's say that meeting is going to be at um, 3 p.m. Okay, so I'm setting it up. Um, I'm going to just be um, just say that my meeting may last three hours, even though it's not going to last three hours. But again, this just reminds us that um, we have a 40 minute time limit. Some universities or areas have um, uh, purchased a, a, um, a plan that you can use more of that time, but our university is out of that plan. So I'm sticking with my free version here. This is not a recurring meeting and this is my time zone so I'm going to keep it there. Oh, I put recurring. It will not be a recurring. Um, I like to generate the meeting ID automatically. Um, this meeting will not require a password. Um, you can choose that it, it does. That's completely up to you. Um, I'm allowing myself to have the video on and the participants to have it um, on as well. And I'm giving the opportunity both audio and video. Um, you can allow them to join before the host. Um, if your group is a, a large group, you may want to mute the participants upon entry so um, that it's not um, filled up. Um, I would I don't choose this often if I have a small group um, class. That way as they come in they can join. Um, you can enable the waiting room. Um, you can allow only authenticated users to join and you have the opportunity to record the meeting. So if I'm doing this as um, one of my classes, um, a lot of times I'll record the meeting um, so that students can come back and listen later to listen to parts they might need reminders of or if someone had to miss for some type of emergency they can come back and rewatch the video later. Then you have to choose what type of meeting. So Zoom, um, spe especially now with the virus where we were um, a brick and mortar university and now we're um, teaching our classes um, completely online, um, you have the opportunity to open up a Zoom meeting for office hours, which is a great way to meet either one-on-one -on -one with your students or in small groups. Um, I have a small night class as a, a class with about 10 students and we have been using uh, Zoom as our class meeting time. It's a great way to see everybody face to face um, and it says in person as we can get. Um, I've also had some uh, consultation meetings um, and I'll be using this in the next couple of weeks as meetings with individual students as they're working on their projects. So there's just um, lots of different types of meetings that you can have. Uh, this type of meeting could be also on a training of professional development. So we're going to go ahead and choose one. It doesn't matter which one you choose. Let's say professional development since I'm teaching you guys how to use Zoom. And we're going to go ahead and click Save. Um, and then here's our Zoom meeting, all right? And here's our URL for them to join. This is all they need to join. And if you notice, it says copy the invitation. Here is the entire Zoom um, invitation where you can email to each of um, the participants. So I'm gonna go ahead and click copy meeting invitation. And this I can add to my email when I email my students or whoever, um, my colleagues, whoever I need um, to join the meeting. Okay. I can start this meeting just straight from here and I can edit this meeting at any time. 
I did notice recently that um, if you're going to schedule a meeting, you usually schedule it ahead of time, of course. Um, I was trying to schedule a meeting with uh, my 10-year-old daughter and her friends. They were having a Zoom meeting on Friday to catch up because they haven't been at school and they, they miss their friends um, because of the virus. We've been quarantined. So um, I tried to schedule a meeting about 30 minutes before the meeting actually happened and the scheduling didn't work because it wanted me to schedule ahead of time. So we just went ahead and hosted a meeting and then invited um, her friends to join. Um, and she enjoyed it so much that um, she can't wait to have her next uh, Zoom meeting. So that's basically all you need to do in order to have a successful Zoom meeting. So then you would go to your account when it's time um, and you can join uh, your meeting. Um, or you can go through your email, you can go uh, click on the link and you can join uh, there. So any of those ways um, are how you can join your Zoom meeting. Um, very easy to use, very user friendly, um, and a way, great way to stay in touch, um, to host your classes, to um, uh, meet up with um, colleagues online virtually, to meet with single students, have um, office hours, advising, um, virtually, um, just about anything. Um, Granted, it does have that 40 minute time limit, which um, limits you a bit. But for, for example, for my night class that usually lasts about three hours, we've divided up the class into 40 minute segments where we'll have 40 minutes and we'll work, we'll have discussions and um, we'll watch videos, we'll, we'll do different activities together. And then when we notice um, that there's a few minutes left, I'll give them a mini assignment to either go work on something or to come back or to take a five minute break and say rejoin the meeting in about 15 minutes and we will do that and catch up from wherever we left off. So this has been a very useful tool. Hopefully um, you will find very similar uses or something that you can use to connect with your classes, um, connect with your colleagues, connect with friends, connect with family, um, and um, connect with virtually any anyone. I hope you enjoyed um, this mini lesson and best of luck. I would like to show you how to use the option of screen sharing during your Zoom meetings. So whenever you are hosting a meeting or you're participating in a meeting, um, I like to use to have the option of video on. Um, you have the opportunity to share your screen or just to share Word documents or PowerPoints um, or um, your entire screen um, as part of your document sharing. Um, so once you have joined the meeting, um, we're going to wait for it to load. Um, here we go. If you notice on the bottom right here, you have the opportunity to share your screen. And when you click on the share screen button, um, it gives you the opportunity to click this button, which would share everything on your screen. Or you can choose, for example, if you just wanted to share um, a PowerPoint, um, or if you just wanted to share a Word document. These are um, things that I have minimized on my desktop. If you just want to share one item, um, or if you want to share your whole entire screen, you would click this button and you would go ahead and click share. And at this point in the meeting, um, everybody would see my screen. And this is what's on my screen right now. If I would open up a document, like here I have a Word document, everyone would see that on my screen. Or if I would open up a PowerPoint, um, everybody would see that um, on my screen because I shared my entire screen. Okay, whenever I am done with that, then I come to the top and I have the opportunity to stop the share. So I'm going to go ahead and stop my share and other people in the meeting that are not hosting the meeting also have this same opportunity to share when they're ready to share or um, to stop the share so that they are no longer sharing. So this is a nice little feature that occurs with uh, Zoom 
and it gives you, the host, the opportunity to share what you would like to share, and it also gives other members the opportunity to share their screens as well. So that is the end of the sharing screen session, um, and I hope you enjoyed it here is where you would press the record button if you were choosing to record your Zoom meetings as well. But now that I've shown you how to share screen, I'm going to go ahead and end this meeting. And I will thank you again for your time listening in on our um, Zoom session. Have a good day.